Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session on using Desmos for world languages and how to increase your engagement um, and understanding of your students' abilities in the target language. My name is Brett Chanko, and I am accompanied by my colleague, Josh Rook. My name is Josh Rook. I am a Spanish two and four teacher in Goochland, Virginia. I also teach mindfulness. And Brett introduced me to Desmos back in October or November of this year. And I have to be honest, at first, I was a little bit hesitant to try yet another tool. I was using Google Forms, loving it. I felt like my students were doing pretty well. Didn't try it for a month or two. And then I made the switch, tried it for a couple of classes, and I was 100% sold. I could immediately see exactly what each of my students was understanding. I could tell exactly how comprehensible I was being on a moment by moment basis. Um, and, and probably, arguably, most importantly, I was able to build connections with my students that I had not been able to do prior to, to using Desmos. Um, because I could ask them, for example, how are you doing today? And not have to wait for every single student to write in the chat and was able to check in with them on a consistent basis. Uh, long story short, Desmos has changed the trajectory of my teaching career. And the beauty of learning this tool, this relatively simple tool is, it is a tool that I will continue to use once we go back into hybrid and into in-person learning. I will use this for the rest of my career. So super excited to have you here and hopefully help you along in this journey. This is our uh, agenda for the training today. Uh, it's got some resources here. I'm not going to actually read these off or anything, but I encourage you to look into them after the video. And it has our schedule. Uh, so uh, right after this, I'll put the bit.ly on the screen and you can open the link in your own computer. OK, so to start off with, what is Desmos? In a sentence, Desmos is the chat from Zoom or Google Meet, but supercharged and with accountability. The reason why I say that is uh, I'm sure you share my sentiment that using the chat during a conference call with your students, if you ask a question and you get five or 10 responses that come in, great. All right, we're moving on. Some students are with me, but there's, real, there's really no sense of accountability there. You have five or 10 students, or maybe you even have half or two thirds of your class answer in the chat consistently, but it doesn't tell you who's not answering. You know what I mean? And it would take you a minute or two to stop class and actually double check the responses against the roster. Nobody's doing that. So you, you don't really know who's not responding. And you also have no way of easily um, assessing the consistency, the consistency of a student's response um, at the end of a class. Like if you wanted to give a formative grade for participation or engagement, or if you actually wanted to grade the responses of a student, the chat just is, it just doesn't work very well. Okay, so at the beginning of the presentation here, I'm going to show you five or 10 minutes worth of me working with my actual students. I've anonymized the names of my students, uh, so you'll see them as famous mathematicians, uh, but, but this is, these, are my, these are my real students. In the first clip, um, you'll see my screen share that I'm sharing to my class over Google Meet, and you'll see a document on, on this side, which is Desmos, where student responses are gonna show up. And then on this side, you'll see a document where I'm typing the question that the students are responding to in Desmos, right? So you should be able to see the responses coming in simultaneously, right? It's amazing. You can actually see the students' progress on their response. You don't have to wait for them to actually submit their response. It's awesome. All right, so check this out. In mm. English. Oh, and Espanol. No importa. ¿Cuál fue el mom tu momento favorito durante el fin de semana pasado? ¿En español o en inglés?
Oh, I love how many people are choosing to practice their Spanish. Nice job, y'all. Diez segundos. Qué bueno su español, estudiantes. Uh, clase. Un estudiante uh, tenía un cumpleaños en, en, en su familia. Uh, el cumpleaños de su madre. Oh, uh, y ellos fueron a Drive Shack. Drive Shack. ¿Qué es Drive Shack? ¿Para golf? Yeah, it's like a golf place where you like play games. Oh, qué bueno. Qué bueno, Samantha. ¿Y te, te gustó? Sí. Oh, hopefully that was amazing to you. It certainly is amazing to me. <laughs> uh, it really brings a sense of community building and interaction back to the virtual educational experience. You know, it really is like me throwing a question out and getting responses live, uh, just like when we were in person. Uh, and you can also see how you can use it as a teacher to build community and to motivate your class to take the next step, right? In that situation, I asked, uh, what was your favorite moment uh, from last weekend? And it was just Monday, first thing in the class, I was looking to build community and uh, engage my students. And right away, I saw an interesting topic. Uh, this student, Samantha, um, she celebrated a birthday with her mom. So I grabbed onto that and for the next five or 10 minutes or so, we reviewed the weekend and the past tense vocabulary uh, and built community by celebrating this event in Samantha's life. It's important to note that for this training's purposes, um, I have the Desmos, I had the questions here and then the students Desmos responses uh, here on the same page. That's just for this training so you could see it side by side. In practice, in my classroom, I have two monitors. Uh, so the students can't see their classmates' responses. They just see on my screen share the question. Uh, and then over here, it, on a screen that only I can see the teacher, I am monitoring their responses. Uh, and then if I want to share out their responses, I just drag the application from, from my personal screen to the screen share that the students see at home. All right, I'm going to show you another clip from that same class. It came about three minutes after the last clip with uh, Samantha and her weekend. Uh, we ended up talking about this restaurant that Samantha went to with her family where um, milkshakes, like these glamorous milkshakes, are sold. And so I asked the, the, students in class, uh, the students in class a question, what milkshake would you like to eat? Right, so the conditional tense, um, and there were some problems there. Uh, right, so I had a moment, I had an opportunity as a teacher to make some interventions, to do some teaching, and then see if the students understood and could correct their work. Desmos is awesome for kind of linguistic interventions, coaching up grammar within context or vocabulary within context or syntactical control, whatever, um, because you can see students' responses live. You can ask them to pause, you can screen share what you need to do to model the correct responses, and then you can say, all right, go fix your answers. And you can see them fixing their answers live. The whole class roster, not just like one student or two students. Uh, in English, y Spanglish, or in Espanol, y Spanglish. Oh, let's pause here. Let's pause and look, take a look at my screen. One student mentioned that, uh, that they have not gone to Mabel's in the past, right? That's exactly why I use this RIA. Instead, like the normal te gusta is do you like, right? That would mean that you've been there before. Okay, but I know that many of us haven't been there. Maybe most of us haven't been there. So that's why I said, te gusta ría. 
That adds the word would. Instead of just you like, it's would. Would you like? Okay, so it's the conditional, right? Um, which means you don't have to have been. So if you've never been before, you've got to use gustaria instead of gusta. If you have been before, then you can say just what you like. <laughs> Me gustaría un batido de chocolate con brownies. Eso. Oh, me gustaría un batido de cookie dough. Muy bien. Uh, me gustaría comer un batido de vanilla con sprinkles. Bien. Muy bien, muy bien. Ok, 10 segundos, clase. Ok. Please take a look at my screen share. Uh, a couple little things to address. Um, let's, remember, let's remember that uh, accent marks are important. So if we look at these two examples, we see that uh, there's a difference between accent mark usage. Let's make sure to go back and double check that we have our accent marks uh, when we need them. And uh, let's also look at uh, how gustar is a bit of a different verb. Remember um, that we have to use may when we talk about gusta in any form, that normally yo is the word for I, but not with gustar. With gustar, you've got to use me. It switches over, right? So uh, let's check for our accent marks and let's check for, let's check for our usage of me instead of yo. Ooh, nice change. Great job with the accent mark there. Great job with the accent mark there. All right. Oh, great change. There we go. Nice job. How cool was that pop-up grammar intervention, right? I mean, to see the students understand my intervention and then change the responses right in the moment. That's really special. Basically, I use Desmos for anything that you can imagine in class. Just uh, how you doing? Uh, do you understand this concept? Uh, translate this for me. Um, here's a quiz, here's a test. I use Desmos as the response platform for any of it. Like you can ask any kind of question in Desmos. It's just a platform for engaging your students in a back and forth. Okay, I've showed you a couple examples from class of what Desmos looks like being used. Um, so the rest of the video is gonna kind of transition to showing you what Desmos looks like uh, from the student, from the teacher's perspective and how to set up your own Desmos stuff. All right, so uh, here we go. Here's what it looks like from a teacher's perspective. All right, so, um, you know, right away on this summary screen as a teacher, you can see how visually appealing Desmos is. I have all of my students in class here. This class, I have 25 students. All right, they're on the left. Uh, I can organize them by time entered or by name. And then at the top, you can add questions for students to interact with. Uh, in my case, um, I want to be able to come up with questions on the fly. So I've just put like placeholders here. You see this? It just says question one. It doesn't actually contain the content of question one. It's just a placeholder question because you have to have this Desmos activity set up beforehand. And I don't know what I'm going to want to ask. Um, so I just put the placeholder questions there and then I maintain a Google document that is for class questions. All right, so this was September 21st for my three odd class. All right, so here's my three odd class and here's the questions. 
So we'll go back to September 21st. So on this document, when I started class, it originally just said the date and it had number one. That's it. And then when kids logged on, I said, okay, class, the first question of today on Desmos is, how are you doing today? How are you feeling today? All right. Right. I don't have to go through this. You can see it's right here. And then students um, went into their Desmos account. And for question one, right, question one, they answer, right? This question, uh, this response says, good, and you? Just want to emphasize again how powerful it is to see your class roster laid out and their responses. That's why Desmos is better than the chat, because you know what students have responded and what students haven't responded. And even better, you can screen share that summary screen. And so then the students know that you know whether students are responding or not. So just the fact that the students know there's accountability drives 90% of your kids to engage with you. You know what I mean? That's so much better than what's happening with the chat box. Uh, plus, you know, with the roster and the responses, you can grade that for participation or a formative grade. Or you could grade the accuracy as a summative grade. So like the fact that there's accountability visually plus the fact that you can grade it is going to drive your students to engage at much higher rates. Um, when, when during class I move from question one to question two, I can literally see like a blue box where this student has moved from this to this. Um, and the dot means that they have submitted an answer. So this student, for example, since it's question one and there's no dot, I know that they logged on late. Um, this student, for example, I know that they weren't in class. Or rather, they were in class because their name appears on the roster for the daily Desmos, but uh, they didn't fill anything out. So that's a zero for, um, you know, today's grade, this day's the 21st, uh, you know, their grade as like a formative grade. I, I grade them based on this. You can see that a couple students missed question seven, right? I don't know why. One, two, three students missed question seven. But you can see that, like, by and large, the class as a whole has participated actively throughout the entirety of the lesson from question one to question eight. It's amazing. Hopefully, I've convinced you to give this a try. So we're going to transition into the portion of the video where I guide you through building your own Desmos. All right, so this is the homepage for Desmos.com. Here you can see it's Desmos.com. Um, you can see that I'm logged in. Uh, I just log in with Google through my school Google account. You can figure out on your own how to log in. You might have to create your own account. Uh, I think it's free, so it was free for me, certainly. Um, if your screen looks like this, it can be a little confusing about where to get going because uh, Desmos was originally designed for math, right? I'm kind of hijacking it. But what you want to do is you want to find this teacher's uh, square, and you want to press Browse Activities. That's how you get into like the teacher facing side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click browse activities. And this next page uh, opens up. And once again, this page is really confusing because I don't want any of this math stuff. Uh, and plus I wanna create my own thing. Uh, so after poking around for a while, I figured out that the only portion of this website that I use is this custom portion. So I'm gonna click that. All right, now you're not gonna have anything here, right? Uh, if you're new to Desmos. Um, what you need to do is you need to click on new activity right there. And that's how you can build an activity. Right, and then I just call it by the date because you have to have a unique one for each date because once the students um, you know, enter an activity and submit answers in an activity, you won't be able to use that activity for the next class. Um, so you make your first activity, uh, let's call it test activity for instructional video, right? 
uh, anyone with the link. Don't, don't do the private. Your students won't be able to access it. So create new activity. All right. Um, there's lots of options, and most of them are math oriented. Uh, but the only option I use uh, is I just say question one and that in the, in the target language. Um, and then I use the text input. And I do not want to show students their classmates' responses automatically. I can do that by sharing my screen, right? I can move the responses over to the, the screen which is being shared to my students over the Google Meet call. So I enable that option. And so students have the ability to type in this text box. And that's the only thing I do. And then from there, uh, you can press this and duplicate screen. And then I just change it to uh, Pregunta Dos. Right? And then I just keep on duplicating until I have however many questions I want. OK, so I now have. Um uh, Desmos here with 19 questions. They all just say question 13, question 14, question 10. They're just placeholder questions like I talked to you all about. Um, on my normal uh, Desmos setup, I do have a customized question for number one that I use every day. Uh, when, when students see it, they see a lot of images of um, possible feelings right because the question is how are you today always question one is how are you today and they have a text box here to respond with so if you want you can uh, customize the first screen if you know you're going to use it every day like that um, later on in the video my colleague Josh is going to show you how to do some customization all right so I have you know my Desmos that I'm going to use every day set up and I'm going to go ahead and publish it So at that point, uh, what you would need to do is assign it to classes. Um, you know, oh, I already actually have this one assigned to classes uh, from earlier, but you would just click whatever classes you need to assign it to for that given date. Um, and today's March 9th, so I would assign it to my March 9th classes. Or if I'm getting it started for the 10th, I would, I would assign it to my March 10th classes, um, which means you need to have classes set up. Uh, so you can manage your classes. In, in this section of Desmos. Um, so let's go take a look at that. Um, you probably won't have anything here if you're new to Desmos, but to add a new class, you just click the Add New Class button in the upper right-hand corner, and it's pretty easy. You just name your class. All right? I just typed in Sample Class, but you can name your classes whatever you want. And there it is. Um, you don't need to... Um, you don't need to manually add your students. What happens is, now remember, I need to get back to my activities in the custom tab is the only place that I can access my activities, right? So I go back to custom and here's this setup activity that I just made, uh, you saw me publish. Um, I click that open and let's say I want to assign this to a class, right? I have a new class here, sample class. I would just click that. Um, in any other class that I want to, and press assign. And, um, you know, it's now assigned this uh, activity to different classes and the links associated with each uh, of the Desmos activities are unique. Even though you applied the same template to multiple classes, it generates, you know, four versions, which is nice. You don't have to create four versions. All right, so that's how you do classes. I mentioned that you didn't need to manually import your roster. What happens is, uh, as soon as you share the first activity for a class with the students, the students click on that link and they automatically um, enroll in that class. And Desmos saves all the students who log into that link as members of that class. So. In other words, Desmos makes your roster for you and saves that roster. So in the future, if uh, your student is absent, you'll, you'll see that their name is gray rather than black, uh, which is a good kind of cue in the moment to remind you that you have absent students. 
once you have an activity where you have your 10 questions that are just question one, question two, you can just copy and edit that. It literally takes like 30 seconds to get the next date set up. So here, here's all my questions, right? I've got them already. I just want to copy this over to a new date. It, it, it gives you a, when you make a copy, it gives you a new title. And I want to change that to September 26th. Or, you know what? Let's change it to the target language. And so I've changed the title. Now let's press publish. At that point, I can assign it to all my classes on Monday. So I've got first block on Monday, and Monday is an even day, right? In, in my county, we have even day classes and odd day classes. So let me assign it to my even day classes as well. Uh, when you want to share that with your students, you can click this student link button and then copy and paste it uh, into a chat box or into your uh, learning platform like school schoology or canvas or uh, blackboard whatever you know whatever you use to, to, to communicate to your students right and this, this is a unique code for each class even though it's just one desmos activity uh, and then to actually enter, the activity as a teacher, you just click view dashboard. And um, you're, you won't have any students, but at the beginning of class, your students will start popping in. All right, so a quick review, a recap before I turn it over to Josh, my colleague, to kind of take it to the next level. Um, Desmos is amazing. It's like the chat functionality, but with accountability, uh, with a very functional uh, visualization. Uh, with your student roster. It's a game changer. Uh, second, there's a system um, of using blank questions that just say question one, question two, question three in Desmos because uh, that gives you the flexibility as, as the teacher to come up with whatever question you feel is needed in the moment. Third, um, you need to maintain a Google document uh, that you can project to the students via your screen share where they can see the questions. Um, that you type in the moment in class when, when you want to check with your students. Um, and finally, it's very useful to have two screens, one screen that you're sharing with your students and another screen that you are monitoring as the teacher uh, as the students are submitting their Desmos responses. So that way you can know uh, how well your students are comprehending you and what the next step is as the teacher. That's the basic daily Desmos. 20 blank questions where students can type text responses. However, there are lots and lots of different things that you can de do with Desmos um, that are still question formats that you can use every class. So you don't have to change them in between classes. You can just copy them over. Um, what I encourage you to do is play around with my system, the basic system for a couple weeks until you're comfortable. And then if you're interested in expanding your knowledge, uh, Josh has a bunch of strategies he's gonna tell you about now, different ways to use Desmos on a regular basis. Hello again, team. So I'm going to speak with you all about some slightly more complex screens that you can use within the activities. Uh, as Brett mentioned, you can easily copy either the entire activity that I will share this activity and also the check-in, another check-in activity with you um, in the agenda document. You can easily copy and edit this. You can also easily copy and edit any of these screens as well. Actually, uh, while I had showed you how to copy and paste an entire Desmos, um, like when we took one date and made the next date, I didn't show you how to copy and paste an individual question. So like, say for example, I wanted to copy this individual question into a new Desmos that I'm working on, um, you know, in another screen. What you would do is you'd click, you know, you'd click on the question you want. Say I want to co copy question one. I would click the preview button in the upper right hand corner. That enters the preview screen. And then right here, there's a little subtle copy button. You would just copy that uh, and you can paste it into your activity builder. And I just press control V and bam, there it is. Uh, there's the new question 
There is the question from the other Desmos that I wanted to copy over to the individual Desmos. So what I'm going to do is first show you a few screens, then I'll play a video of me talking through these screens with my students. This, in this screen, students can choose whatever color they'd like. And if you're not a Spanish teacher, it says, how do you feel? Draw and write your response. So students go in here, they draw their responses, and then here they're meant to write, I feel, and then why they feel, how they feel. And they can use this graphic. Again, all of these things are customizable and it's very easy to do. The next screen is a screen that essentially gives me an opportunity to see if everything is okay with them. And as I said, one of the things that I really appreciate about Desmos is being able to get lots of individual feedback and really try to make personal connections with students. And so this is one of the ways that I do it. I don't always have that screen, but oftentimes I do. And then the next one is a simple uh, multiple choice question where students click on what the weather is like that day. I didn't create this. I found this document uh, as, long, uh, as well as almost all of the documents or all of the screens that I'm showing you. I have copied from other teachers. The, in addition to the two resources that I'm going to share on the agenda, I'll also share a link to a Facebook group, uh, Desmos for Language Teachers Facebook group, and uh, there are tons and tons of resources and lots of wonderful world language teachers in that group that can also help. So let's go check out a part of a recording where I walk through a couple of these screens. So you will see in just a moment when I start this video that it's the end of announcements. Students have already entered into class, but they aren't really expected to have done anything. What I've found with Desmos is that I can pace the students into the first few questions and many students will get started with the activity before class has even begun. So I have three or four students that are already uh, have already answered three of the four questions and a number of others are getting there. This blue box represents where the student is. The little dot indicates that the student has answered the question. So let's watch this just for a minute. Hola, clase. Uh, gracias por entrar en Desmos a uh, 16 de 23 estudiantes están trabajando. Excelente. So what I've said there is I was pointing out the fact that 16 of 23 students were already in and working on it uh, immediately as soon as class started. Now I'll skip forward a little bit and I'll show you what it looks like when I pop over to the first question. And I will look through the students' answers and drawings. And you can just make corrections there. And oftentimes the students will, will make the corrections in the document real time, which is wonderful. Me siento feliz porque yo, excelente clase. If you want to say because I am happy, me siento feliz porque yo estoy, estoy feliz. Bien, Charles, so estoy feliz. Again, one of the things I love about this is I can provide real-time feedback and see immediately if the students are making those changes. On the left-hand side, you might have noticed that there were the, the images were changing as students drew in that, um, in that space. So let's go on to the next one. I didn't spend very much time at all on the second question because students said that they didn't have any um, that, that nothing was going on in their lives that they needed oh, help with. Senorita, uh, Sammy, I... Okay. And then the, the last question is simply the weather question. And hopefully you'll see these boxes changing. You can real time uh, poll students on what they think. And so as students click on the buttons, the, the numbers will change here. See, si, Sammy, see. Si. Uh-huh. Chequealo. Take a peek. <laughs> okay. Hace sol, clase. Correcto. Si, hace sol. Okay. So let's pop back to the templates, and then we'll look at another video or two. 
All right, the next template on this list is a brain break. Of course, you do not need to find these images I created. You don't need to create these images. I created this one in Canva, but uh, you could either have an image or not. And the idea here, what you're gonna see students do uh, is hopefully type in real time how they felt about the, the practice that we had just done, the, the mindfulness practice we had done together as a class. So let's find that video. So the main reason I wanted to show you this video was so that you can see, again, what students are writing on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Just lay down on your back and focused. Yeah. Take deep breathing and stretch. That's great. Wonderful. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok normally isn't, you're honest. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's jump back and we'll look at another another screen that you can use and then I'll show you another video. So the reason I thought that I would show you this next screen is that in this screen it allows students to draw over a background image. So this is called the sketch function and what I did is I just took a screenshot and imported an image and then students are actually able to draw on top of this. So let's watch them draw for a second here. So what you'll see here is first I can see all of the students responses and then I'll click on a couple of these responses to basically just zoom in on what they've created and then I can share that with students. As I'm sure Brett has mentioned, the I don't I don't always show students what they are doing as they're working. Uh, I did this for the presentation more than anything. That said, from time to time, I do pop in and show them each other's work and help them to learn from each other. So here is the video. Mira este dibujo de Gloria. Wow, el arte me gusta mucho. Vamos a ver el arte de otro otro estudiante. Ajá, opción dos. Vamos a ver el arte de otro estudiante. Sí, perfecto clase. Me gustan. At the end of many of my classes, I ask students to summarize what we've talked about in class, or I type out a summary and simply ask them to copy the summary. In this class, what I've asked them to do is just that, and we use this in the Revisar y Escribir page, and I'll pop over to a video of my students uh, copying me, uh, copying the text that I write, and on the next screen, which we won't see, I ask them to translate certain portions of this to really check for understanding. The beauty of this activity is that I can see students as they're typing, as I've said again, and immediately know if they're with me. So this screen on the left is the screen where I was typing the, the write and discuss, the summary of what we talked about in class. And then this screen over here is Desmos, where we can see the students' screens as they are updating them in real time. All right, just a couple more templates that I wanted to show you. The, the next one is going to be, or the next few are templates that I use at the end of class. One of the most important things that I want to know at the end of class is how much Spanish did they understand? So I almost always have this question, how much of the Spanish, uh, how much of the Spanish did you understand from class today? Then I also always ask students, how did they feel about the lesson? And I change these questions up some, but I find that these are among the most helpful questions that I ask over the course of a class because it helps me to improve as a teacher 
and it gives the students a voice. And I constantly reinforce the fact that I read their answers and that I appreciate the thought that they put into them. And then the uh, another slide that I screen that I normally have is have in, in have in there is a screen where I ask students to tell me when the next homework assignment is. It just reinforces in their minds that they have a homework assignment and they have to check and see when it's due. And then, you know, especially in the virtual world, it can be tempting to use a, a translator. So I just have one more reminder of the importance of not using a translator in here. Uh, we'll watch a minute or less of my students or my students typing in these last few uh, pages. Another one of the things that I so appreciate about Desmos is that I'm able to cover much more material than I was prior to using Desmos, and students can respond to questions more quickly than, well, they respond more quickly than they did prior to using Desmos. You'll see that right here again, these are the number of students that are on those questions. You'll see that they cycle through it pretty quickly. Now, whereas in class it might take me a minute just to get an answer to how much of the Spanish did you understand today, I can get that information immediately, almost immediately. And as always, I appreciate your feedback. So there we go, they're filling in, showing me how much they understood. And here in a moment, we'll go to the next screen where they talk about um, how they felt. For the reflection, please make sure to write at least a sentence or two. And, as, and I really do particularly value any specific comments that you can give me. Gracias. They're not always going to be positive, and that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pause this here. You can imagine what the homework, what it looks like when the students are filling out the homework slide. Over on this right-hand side, hopefully you saw that uh, I can see in real time how the students rated the class. And the last thing that I wanted to do was just briefly show you this other check-in document. Uh, this has lots and lots of check-ins in English that you can easily translate into your language. And they're just fun screens to have at the beginning of class. You can see there's one here, how are you feeling? And you slide the flag. And uh, it, I believe this one changes how Yoda looks. Uh, there are other ones that are related to Mario Brothers. I have not created any of these. They are all taken from other resources, which is one of the things, another one of the things that I love about Desmos. It is so easy to copy and paste materials and resources from other teachers. I hope that this has been helpful. And if you all ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Also, again, Feel free to join that Facebook group. There are tons of really talented and generous people in that group that would be more than willing to help you in your Desmos journey. Just want to reiterate that all those screens that Josh just showed you, they're applicable to all of his lessons, or at least most of them are applicable to, to most of his lessons. So this is not something that he creates for every lesson. These are templates that he just copies and pastes. Uh, it's a very quick and efficient way to organize yourself. Uh, I, hopefully you value this presentation. Hopefully it's useful for you in your practice. And hopefully you see the value for continuing to use it even when everything normalizes. I wish you the best.